This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now here are your hosts, Justin Strawn and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, the prepper of our podcast, Ryan Nelson. Justin, I want to give a shout out to Linda Ronstadt, who's about to hit that Kate Bush <laughs> yeah, money, baby. Yeah, you're probably right. You are because I've already listened to your song, <laughs> and I'll listen again. Yeah, I even thought about that, but yeah, you're probably right about that. She's probably about to make get a a little good for you, Linda. Yeah, you deserve it. A nice little chip bounce in royalties here down with uh, that song. At least I'm assuming that she wrote it anyway. Oh, so yeah. Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast since we started the podcast last year, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoyed it as we talk about the third episode of The Last of Us titled Long, Long Time on HBO and HBO Max. If you are new or a regular and would like more access to the show, visit our Patreon page and become a patron of The Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash The Main Attraction Podcast. You can get Patreon-only content. You can support us at a three, five, ten, or twenty dollar level, and when you join up, we'll shout you out here on the show. If you want ad free access to the podcast, any level of being a Patreon supporter will get you the show ad free. So just any level you want to sign up for, as low as a three or as high as a twenty dollar level, will get you the show ad free. So you can just go over to Patreon, sign up, and start getting the show without the ads. If you can't be a patron, though, you can help the show out by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating, and if you have time, write us a review while you're there on Apple Podcasts. If you would like to interact with the show, send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. Send us any questions, any thoughts, or any uh, possible suggestions that you might have on things we might cover. We would love to hear those over on our email. All right, real quick before we get into this, uh, I just want to go ahead and tell y'all if I'm if it doesn't sound like I'm on my A game today, I'm currently have COVID, uh, and I've really wanted to make sure we get this po- uh, podcast put out. And also, uh, we normally do two a night. Uh, I'm just trying to spread it out so hopefully we can get both episodes in. So we're doing one right after it airs, and hopefully one tomorrow as well. But uh, so like I said, if I'm not quite uh, to my usual self, guys, I apologize for that. Because, but this COVID stuff is rough. <laughs> so yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, it, it's no whatever that virus is. So. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It is not the cordyceps. So, so we're thankful for that. So uh, anyway, real quick, getting in. Let's get into this. Uh, Ryan, obviously, we talked about this kind of leading up into this episode. Uh, one of the things that you and I had both heard coming into this was that the third episode was kind of like it, where it finds its next level. Do you think it lived up to the hype that you were hearing? I, I definitely think it did. Uh, I, it's not really with this actual story, right? No, it feels like a different part of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but I mean, when you have Murray Bartlett and Nick Offerman as a couple, right, in an episode of TV in a long one. Oh yeah, but mm-hmm. I don't care. It was heaven on earth until the end, and it became hell. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. So, it was a really, it was a really, really good episode. I was really yeah. impressed. Uh, I. Th- I'm glad they didn't focus all, uh, too much on the physical part of their relationship, at the end, except for there at the beginning, just because I know that would have turned some people off. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm so I'm glad that they only focused on that a little bit. And honestly, that's not what their relationship ends up being about. I mean, it, obviously, you know, when they first start this, you know, Murray Bartlett says he's going to stay for a couple of days, and he ends up being there for 20 years. Uh, yeah, right. So it's, you know, it's one of the cool things about this episode is that they find an opportunity to put something really and it's kind of the way that this show has been so far is they are finding a way to put beautiful things inside horrific horrible events and yeah. uh, even like last week when we talked about episode two you know there's all this beautiful green life that was popping out of like mm-hmm. people's skulls i mean so, right. so i mean this is kind of one of the things that they're doing that's kind of interesting and it really takes a front seat here with this this love story between these two people and one of the things i think that's also very interesting is they are they keep showing us the power of love Mm-hmm. Like we yeah. saw the power of love with with Joel in the first episode. We see the power of love that he has towards uh, Tess uh, and Tor's character, and we see the power of love now with between Frank and Bill. And we're getting like how that can be good, but 
they keep talking about this like on the official podcast and then if you watch it on HBO Max you get the after I'm assuming that it's only done on HBO Max maybe it's done on uh, regular HBO as well I think it's just HBO Max so I, when I used to watch episodes on HBO they never showed that okay so the inside the episode stuff that they do on HBO Max they talk about a lot about how yeah love is kind of a driving theme in this but it's also they're hinting at the fact that it could be lead to like bad things as well and just how dangerous love can sometimes be right. and i feel like we're they're really kind of driving at that because you know joel in the first episode fails his daughter joel in the second episode, he fails tess he gets yeah. reminded of his failure of tests yeah. here in the third episode so like i said i'm wondering if they're really pushing us towards that yes love is a powerful thing but joel might end up doing something that he regrets later on or might make him do something that is yeah. you know dastardly or something well i have a feeling he mentioned him Tommy may be involving that. Speaking of love, yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job, and I would be doing a disservice to my friends and family if I don't mention. You say the words "power of love," which was an eighty ba- <laughs> yeah, '80s ballad by you, Lewis, like, and you Lewis and News, and we, you know, '80s music was a big thing between Frank and Tess. So. Yeah, yeah, it was. Like I said, one of the things that's interesting about this, I did a little research, and they talked about this on the inside of the episode. So I did a little research into these two characters because I knew that they were going to be in it. I, I was wondering if this was a, if these are characters that were in the game, or if these were characters that were uh, made up for the show. They are characters from the game, but there is a huge difference in their game characters and what we see in this. Uh, in the game. It is a much bleaker story from the two of them. They don't ever come, from what I understand, they don't ever come out and say that they have a relationship it is hinted at, but it is not ever, they don't ever come out and specifically state it. And these are two relatively minor characters, but they are there. But Bill is the only one that we ever actually see because Frank is already dead. Uh, So this is a huge departure from from the game. And uh, not Craig Mason, the other guy, Druckmann. Neil Druckmann, he talks about this in the inside the episode. He says, you know, when they talk about if they're going to deviate from the game, if they can make it better, or if it's if they can't make it, if it's, if it's going to be just the same, or if it's going to be worse, don't deviate. But if they see an opportunity to deviate and it's better than what the game actually has, they wanted to go down that road. So this is by far the biggest departure from the game. There is not this big, long, from what I understand, there is not this big, long backstory for, for Bill and Frank. They Like I said, Bill is still there, and they do talk about Frank some, and we do, the only thing we see of him is a corpse. So to depart from this was it's a little bit of a gamble for the, for the video game players what do you think we neither of us have played the game just how do you think the video game players will react to such a departure from the game well let's just be honest there's a uh a, a audience of them are just going to be ridiculous and complain but this is so good and so nice to have and that you know you're doing a video you're doing a tv show so you can expand on a character you love right i don't see how you can't love this especially when you hire murray bartlett right. and nick offerman and mm-hmm. they do that good of a job because i can tell you they're both gonna get nominated for an emmy for like special guest, guest appearance, appearance or something like that, that yeah 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 they i mean they were both incredible yeah and, they were and, and I know I mentioned that song. There's no way you will never not hear that song again, not think about this episode, and not get emotional. Right. Never. Yeah, I, th- I think you're you're correct about that. And, I, I and think- uh, shout out to Gary Wright. He actually wrote the song. He's still alive. Brother, you about to get paid. Yeah, he's gonna get he's gonna get quite a bit uh, of royalties come flying in here soon. People are gonna be pulling that up on Spotify, on Apple Music, yeah. and all that fun stuff. So, uh, but yeah, one of the things I think that's uh, well, here's the thing. I think they're going to. I think the video game people are going to enjoy this because. These are characters that people were curious about from the video game that they kind of did yeah. want backstory on. So I think this is one of the things that this is how you do a video game show. And this is what mm-hmm. a show allows yeah. you to do that a movie doesn't allow you to right. do. You can now right. explore these characters. Some. You can now kind of go down their road and see what it was that made these characters and who they were and why they got to where they were uh, and why you came to understand and know these characters in the game. You can now kind of explore those in, in a in a television show, which you can't do in in a movie which was this was supposed to be a movie back like four or five years ago with sam raimi directing it and it probably would have been a decent movie but i don't know that they could have done what they are doing in this show so far anyway 
Well, let me make another comparison, and it always involves Station Eleven. That book, Jeevan, is not the same character he ends up being right. on screen. And there's not a book reader that doesn't tell you, oh, this is better. Right, exactly. So, so yeah, like I said, there's there's ways that they can, like I said, I mm-hmm. think it's, it, it works really well. So let's kind of get into yeah. just the, the nitty-gritty of this episode. So we're obviously getting the aftermath of, of Tess having died. Uh, Joel builds like this memorial obviously it's not a grave it's not a grave because her her great her body what was left of her body would be left in boston but uh he builds this memorial for her out on this river 10 miles outside of boston uh and you get kind of an uncomfortable conversation between between ellie and joel at this point and there's a nice shift from the beginning from for ellie at the beginning where he's basically she's basically telling joel and she's correct that this is not her fault it's not ellie's fault right uh yeah. but she's very insensitive about what has just taken yeah. place and at the end she after she reads the note from from bill to joel because he figured it would be joel that found the found the house and found the bodies when we get to the end he you know she understands that you know everything that he is doing that joel is doing at this point he was supposed to be doing for Tess, and now he's having to do it for ellie and that makes her realize so that's a great that's a great moment for for bella ramsey in this yeah but uh you know we get this uncomfortable conversation that leads into after they go past this this area where all these people were killed by the military because there was no room for them in the quarantine zone which joel wanted to hide from ellie because he didn't want her to see that and when she realizes these people weren't sick you know that's a that's a sad realization and she asks you well why don't you just let them live why don't you just let them be and he says you know sick dead people can't get the virus and they can't get infected and that's the reason they end up killing these innocent people and it just shows the harsh reality especially at the beginning of this thing when you know because this takes place like three or four days after the initial outbreak and it just shows just how people were you know just kind of like gut punch reacting to this this stuff and you know they're killing people who weren't even sick just because you know if they if we don't have room for them and they're out there then they yeah. get infected and it just it's just a, such shows the bleakness of this world before we go into this beautiful part of the world right i know isn't that isn't that scary hey gang if we have a pandemic again let's act a little better next time guys <laughs> yeah i know uh, about it. <laughs> but it's uh it's just scary and especially i love how you see that that body and you see that green shirt and then you see it on that young lady with the baby yeah with the baby just mm-hmm. to show you how bleak and how devastating this was right it, it, it was a, like i said it's just a really interesting contrast to go from that to to nick offerman who is in a bunker underneath his basement of oh, when we get yeah. introduced because i can, not today <laughs> not today that was one of the great lines not today yeah. you new world order jack f's uh but you know when i saw that he's going to be playing a prep which i kind of figured based off of the previews from last week but i wasn't 100 yeah. percent certain i was like yes give me nick Alderman as a prepper yeah. uh but it's just a great scene like as soon as because everybody is being rounded up they're taking everybody out and his little town is now completely abandoned which is like just perfect for him because it's pretty clear even though he never comes out and says it until we, we read the letter at the end of the episode he doesn't like people no, <laughs> he no, doesn't like yeah. people at all i, I kind of wish because i was th- my first thought was what's he do with that boat i thought he maybe he just stole his neighbor's boat because he never right. liked them he wanted that boat but of course he ended up using it oh, yeah, he had for storage for it. Mm-hmm. but i was just like that would just been funny if they were like, I hate you, you know, John, I'm going to steal your right. boat. <laughs> and, you know, what's funny is, you know, preppers are kind of, an, you know, when we think about preppers, we often think of, like, really annoying people because they have all this stuff stocked up and they, they're constantly right. talking about yeah, conspiracy yeah. theories. And you just kind of, like, just kind of roll your eyes at them. But, obviously, once the end of the world gets here, you want to be friends with a prepper. You, you, at least one. Make <laughs> friends with one of them. <laughs> That's right. Make friends with at least one of them because when the end of the world came, he was ready for it. And yep. uh, he had everything in line. So, because – the moment that he realizes the entire town has been evacuated, he goes into action. He comes out in his, with his gas mask on, with his shotgun, 
and he just starts doing whatever he wants. I mean, yeah. he goes and he raids the Home Depot. I mean, he obviously, I mean, it, it was clear that he had a plan. I mean, he goes mm-hmm. to the Home Depot. He goes to all these places to collect all these supplies. He needed to go to the gas company get, so he could keep water going. Yeah, keep his water going, keeping his, his gas flowing. Uh you know, he had all these things. He had all this stuff in mind, and he has this gigantic generator, which is going to take gas as well. So he's going to need. He's going to need that. He's going to. He, yeah. You know, he fills up these gigantic barrels full of gasoline, which should last him for you know decades because he's not going to be driving anywhere. I mean, right, right. So yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, it's he like I said he thought of everything uh, when he's doing this, and you know, the very first time we see one of the zombies that are starting to come towards his his compound you know he's just watching as he's eating this and just this in you know this incredibly well-cooked dinner yeah. uh oh, it, man, it looked good it really it really did look good and we see this zombie come towards it and like he trips a tripwire and it shoots the zombie in the head and he's like never gets old <laughs> like this yeah. is not the I first know, time he's seen it uh but it, like it, it's just he's in his own world he has the world to himself which is something that he is obviously wanted but it all gets thrown into chaos the moment you know a few weeks later when when uh franklin from frank shows up who's played incredibly well by uh murray bartlett oh man so good and we meet him and he has fallen into a hole which is obviously one of the traps that uh bill has set up i'm sure that was covered up because i might have they show him covering it up i forgot about that he covers it up with this mesh wire and he sods it over he falls in, and then they have this conversation. And like I said, this is when their relationship starts. Uh, it, look, I, I felt kind of, I felt pretty certain that they were going down a relation, a romantic road. What were you thinking? Yeah, yeah, the same thing. Yeah, because they kept like, I would say, making googly eyes at each other, like right. they were. Yeah, you now, could feel something was there. Yeah. Now let me ask you this, because these are completely polar opposite people. Uh, yeah. Do you think that um, if the world were going on normal, no, I'll, <laughs> they would not get together. Okay, no. yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. It's like there's no way on God's green earth that these two people get together in a normal circumstance. But just because there was, there was a reason Nick Offerman was alone and had not been with the person, right? Because he's not meant for that. And yeah, you know, Murray Bartlett is. It's just circumstance that brings them together, and it's circumstance that kind of makes yeah. them thrive for a while. And it, obviously, yeah. look, it's it's a beautiful start. You know, uh, Nick Offerman makes a meal for him uh they just kind of get off the start i don't really know that this was something that bill was looking to go down i wasn't even sure i'm not even sure at this point that he's even wanting to pursue relationship but when he pulls out that when frank goes over pulls out the the linda ronstadt song book on the piano and he starts playing that that song what was it called long long ago yeah long Uh, long time long long time long long time uh when he starts playing the song and he's playing it poorly, and <laughs> he really was. Uh, you know, this just, it's its driving Bill crazy. And he, he sits in, he starts to play, and then he plays it the way it's supposed to be played, tenderly, softly. And it's obviously drawing some emotion. Now, Murray Bartlett keys in on it, notices it, and this is when the two of them connect. And you yeah. can tell that one is, it, it was incredibly smart to make Murray Bartlett the one who is more comfortable with this because he actually is, yeah. he actually is a gay man, and Nick Offerman, from what I understand, is not. Uh, yeah. So it makes sense to have Murray Bartlett as the one who is the more comfortable in this relationship. I thought it worked really well there at the beginning. I think so too. And Murray Bartlett is one of the most charismatic people I've ever seen. I've seen him like three or four things now since White Lotus, and he just takes up the screen, and you cannot not fall in love with him. Yeah, what have you seen him? Because I haven't seen anything since uh, White Lotus. Welcome to Chippendales. Okay, I haven't uh, seen that. Physical. Uh, there was something else I saw. Man. I, yeah, I haven't seen any of those, so that's yeah. probably one reason why. Uh, so anyway, yeah, but, but yeah, I, I really kind of agree with you on on all that. He's just really, really good for this, and he's just he's done a he's been so good since White Lotus, and he's made the most of that opportunity he's been given. I think he's going to continue to make yeah. great uh, TV later on. Now, after this tender, nice moment that the two of them have, we then go into. An obvious light because the two are so different three years later, and that's what they, and that's what they kind of set up is this is going to be their life together over the course of these twenty years. Uh, 
So over the course of the next three years, they are now having an argument, a very deep-seated argument about just differences in people. Frank wants to make the make the compound look nice. He wants to have some yeah. paint. He wants to have gas for the for the mower so that they can mow the yard. And Bill is just like that is bad resource management. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, just the, the differences in these two start to show up, and we start to see them. And I thought it was really good that we kind of see the difference because I was like, I, it, I can't imagine these two characters that much alike when we first meet them, right. and we see that here in this very next scene. Well, I think what scares Bill the most is Frank wants to venture out and meet people <laughs> and help others, and and you know, find friends. Yeah, I know. And that's when he says, I want to find friends. It's like, what friends are you going to find? Which it's obvious that it's going to be, it's going to be Tess and Joel yeah. when he, when he mentions that, which was, which is great that we get Tess back for this episode. Yeah, for a little it was bit. nice. I bet we see Tess a lot more. Yeah, I think we'll see her more too, but it was nice to just see Anna Torv mm-hmm. as the nice, young, attractive woman that she actually yeah, is. Yeah. Right, right, right. Instead of the, the beat up, you know, hardened yeah. person that we saw over the first two episodes of the show so uh but yeah like like i said it's this dinner between the two of them between the four of them is just absolutely wonderful because you've got you got tess and frank who are just you know having a ball having a conversation with with different people and you've got you've got bill with a gun and uh, joel is just staring across at him and you know because those are the kindred spirits there you know tess is tess and frank are the social ones joel and bill are the survivors and they have very that's the distinct roles that they have now look they even say this at the end there's a lot of mutual respect between joel and between bill you don't really feel like there's a lot of you know deep-seated affection though but there's just a right. lot of respect but i don't know besides besides frank i don't know if bill ever had affection for anyone else well, that's his true. mother yeah his mother his mother and that's about it so uh but you know this is when joel look he's a survivor and he understands you know and just really intelligent he knows that you know there could be a beneficial relationship between the two of them and look bill is for the most part he understands it at this point he's like you know what we're self-sufficient we don't there's nothing that you can provide that we actually need and joel understanding you know i, I want to convince him of this he, he points out immediately your fence has about a year left at most uh and, you know he starts talking about this stuff and these other things that they're going to need that way there can be a beneficial relationship between the two of them uh and this is how we learn about kind of i think they had mentioned it some in episode one and episode two but you know the, the song system uh is yeah. coming from bill and frank mm-hmm. uh, so we know that this is what this is what uh is causing the uh what's where that song is coming from the, on the radio uh and also it's apparent that now that we get to the end of this episode that the 80 song that we hear at the beginning of the episode at the beginning of the season it looks like this was started when the two of them decided to take their lives. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, like I said, they're really doing a good job of just kind of paying off some things that they've been building towards already in really right. three episodes in. So, I think it's really great by these people. Yeah. And let me just say, how amazing would it be to have a fresh strawberry after about 10 years? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it had to be just absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah. Uh, one of the things I like about this is we get so many different – there's a lot of tonal shifts in this episode. I mean, you have – you have the tender moment between the two of them at the beginning of it. You've got the funny bickering couple there at one point. You've got the moment where they're having to defend their compound against these raiders. Yeah. Uh, you've got that was something. That man. really was. I mean, Bill had it ready. Yeah, he did. And that's just you know it just kind of comes to show that he's he has truly thought about everything mm-hmm. up until this point, and that's just one additional thing that he has 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 crossed his mind that he is planning for, and you know it's. It's great that we're watching. I felt like these people were going to die. I mean, it's, yeah, it yeah. seemed. I just didn't know. If it well, it looked like Bill was going to die from his uh, shot. From his gunshot, from yeah. His, so yeah, I was wondering. Gunshot, yeah, yeah. I was wondering how they were going to end up dying at, at this point because I didn't know if it was going to be through this. Is this is when we're losing Bill and yeah. Frank dies later on? But Frank, obviously, we never find out what Frank does. We never, honestly, we didn't know what Bill does did either before uh, yeah. the entire thing hit. But obviously, right. he he had at least a basic understanding of. Yeah. what needed to happen and, and i'm glad you brought this up this 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 is a rule for the show that we have to follow now do not get used to the guest stars yeah i think you know we're going to talk about in our midweek episode we're going to be talking about uh 
we're going to be talking about Poker Face, which is going to be kind of a guest week of guest week of mm-hmm. the week show type thing. I kind of feel like that's what this show yeah. is kind of going down and towards. Did, did you see who's next Melly week? Linsky? Yeah, Melly Melanie Linsky. Melanie Linsky, and then she looks like she's taking no prisoners. It does look like and she's I taking no prisoners. I am so happy for this. I know it's going to be a fun episode next week. Uh, so, uh, like I said, but just the tonal shifts in this. So after you know mm-hmm. we get the we get the defense of the of the compound, we then get taken straight to murray bartlett in a wheelchair and look did they say what he had because i never called no, it but it looked like he had a stroke because he was having issues using this like the rights it looked like it's maybe right, it's his well i just side. also heard him they said there uh when they're talking about him actually ending his life he says there was no cure before everything went to crap and there's obviously not gonna be one now so i was like there's that could it, be als or i know something. i was thinking is this als is this what is this yeah. uh is it polio i mean i was kind of wondering uh, if that may have been what it was because this but he would have had a polio vaccine but yeah so i don't know i like that i'm not real sure what it was that he had uh but and it probably doesn't i mean it doesn't ultimately matter but he's yeah. just that's just me thinking oh, i wonder what that was yeah. that he had so uh that we get him in a wheelchair. The two of them are obviously much older. My guess is they're probably late sixties, early seventies, if you had to guess. Yeah. yeah, I would think the same. Yeah, uh, but you know, they have obviously they understand what their life is like at this point. And it's you know, it's one of the things that you can't really plan for as much as you know when Bill was planning all this, he wasn't planning on having anybody else there with him. And now you know, it's one of those things. How do you plan for when you get to the point where you're old and you're right and you're struggling to just you know you're struggling with just the day-to-day life of being an old person uh right and that's you know something that he no matter how much prepping he could do that's not something that he could plan for and you know it's obviously a difficult thing because at this point murray bartlett's character uh frank has you know he's done living with this whatever disease or whatever ailment that it is that he has and he wakes up one day he spent the entire night getting into his wheelchair on his own and he tells he tells bill that you know uh, this is my last day and they have this incredibly emotional scene where they're talking through it uh they decide to have their own marriage ceremony uh and you know murray bartlett's character frank's got it completely planned out they're going to have this marriage ceremony they're going to uh, have this wonderful meal together, and at the end of the meal, they're just going to take these crushed up pills, which my guess is probably there's something like Ambien or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, and they're going to crush them all up and put them in his drink, and when he drinks it, he will fall asleep, and that will be the end of him. And I kind of felt like they were going to go down this road that uh, Bill was going to basically kill himself as well. Uh, yeah. You had the same thought. Yeah, I did. You could feel like a Romeo and Juliet type thing. Coming. Yeah, it, it really felt like that way. But it was still just a really nice way for them to yeah to go off. And then Bill does it give Nick Offerman a lot of credit as well because he is just he's doing just a great job of selling. You know, I'm an old man. I'm uh, this is yeah. I'm I've lived my life. You were my you were my purpose, and now my purpose is gone. So there's no reason for me to hang around. And you know that's what is so. Which is such a vast difference from what he was. And this kind of, again, when we talk about this show, and we talk about kind of what Station Eleven was about, because that, that, there was that line in Station Eleven where uh, survival is not enough. Yeah. You know, that's all that that's all that Bill cared about when this show first begins. All he cared about was survival. He didn't care right. about anything else. He didn't care about anybody else out there. He just wanted to survive. And now that he has brought someone to his life, he realizes that survival is not enough. And, yeah. you know, he could just keep on living after Frank ends his life on this evening, but he has no more purpose anymore. And there's no yeah. reason for him to stay there. And Bill actually said a beautiful line that was in, in tension for my line of the week, uh, or, or in contention for my line of the week. I was never afraid before you showed up. Right. And that's not like. He's talking about like he was. He's afraid not to go on without right. without Frank. And what's the purpose? And I was thinking about that. Like you know, if I was with my wife and she was passing away, and I'm in a situation like, what is the point of going on? Right. Exactly. And you know, that's it's just a really beautiful moment between them. So yeah. obviously, they end their lives. And I, I was glad that we didn't end. It. They could have ended the episode here. Uh, yeah. But I. 
I think it would have been a mistake to, uh, and no. so I, uh, just because I think they still need to tie this back into mm-hmm. our greater story. And this is when Joel and Ellie they make their way to they make their way to the compound, and Joel can tell immediately that something is off because he mm-hmm. sees dead flowers, he sees yeah. that the very well kept compound, probably mostly because of Frank, uh, yeah. is there's there's signs that things aren't so great anymore uh so they yeah. go into the house and you, you see the the meal they had has started to gather flies there's dust all over the place uh and joel is looking around for uh the joel is looking around for the for the two people the frank and bill and while he's looking ellie finds the letter and when she finds the letter she reads it and she understands what is taking place and there's the key to the to the chevy s10 uh but like I said, this the letter that he leaves is really, really, really powerful mm-hmm. because it basically is trying to explain to Joel this thing that he's constantly having to be explained to him ever since he loses his daughter in the very first episode. You have to fight for what those who can survive. That's one of the things yeah. that Tess tells him. Yeah. That's one of the things that this letter tells him as well. And like I said, Bill thought he was writing about Tess, and he, but basically now he has to put all that effort that he that Bill wanted him to give towards protecting Tess. He's now got to give it towards protecting Ellie. Yeah, he he needs a purpose. Find a reason mm-hmm. to live. Right, he does. Bill thought he did. Yeah, and he did. And like I said, he's basically got to come to he's got to come to terms with the reason that he has yeah. to the reason he has to live is now because of Ellie. It may not. Yeah, you lost your daughter. You lost Tess. And he's reminded again of those failures, and I'm sure he, in the back of his mind, he's like, "I'm going to fail this girl too." I mean, he, I really right. honestly feel like he continues to feel that, and he does. He probably feels like he's the wrong person for this job because of it. But, uh, but he's got to understand that, and he's got to come to grips with it. So, uh, they get all these, they get all their, their supplies together. And one of the the things that they don't do a whole lot of, but then when they do it, they do. She does it so very well. Uh, Bella Ramsey, whenever she gets thrown into a situation where she is approaching something that a child of a post-apocalyptic life or post-apocalyptic world would have never experienced. For example, never getting into a car before. She does such a good job of just giving us that childlike wonder of being in a car. Like it's a Chevy right. S10. It's just, yeah. I mean, it's an it's a. a a 20 probably a 2000 chevy s10 if i had to guess yeah, right and she is just fascinated by it and like i said she just does that so very very well she's so good in this role she really she's is playing like that old brat and there's times where you have to like remind herself oh yeah she's just a kid yeah she is that's why she's annoying but then also you know like you said she's sweet and you're like she's learning things and she wants to right. learn more and, yeah and you just love her yeah i'm one thing i meant to i meant to bring up at the, about the beginning of this so at the beginning let's talk, i want to kind of go all the way back to that there's an interesting scene with her at the very beginning when they go to this convenience store and she drops down that hole I'm like what are you doing you don't go down the dark hole what are you doing girl uh yeah she, she goes down i, that, know, I wrote that down too <laughs> she goes down that dark hole and she sees the the a little bit of a developed cordyceps infected person uh enough it's not quite a clicker but you can see the they're not too far away from being a clicker and like she's just like studying that person because there was that line earlier like do you feel bad because she when she asked joel if she if he felt bad about uh killing one of them because she he knew that they were at one time a person and she's just like yeah. studying him like a lab rat and then just the joy that she seems to have in killing it it was it's and a little quickly. creepy yeah uh-huh. yeah i know it was i was like that was a little creepy but uh but here again at the end so she gets a gun she gets she gets frank's gun the one that was kind of designated yeah. for him so we'll i'll be interested in how how that plays out but uh we, we will be seeing that soon i'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm afraid yeah I'm, I'm afraid we're gonna see that too i don't know that it's going to go well so no uh Anyway, like I said, just a really powerful episode. Like when I heard it was this like standout episode, I wasn't really expecting this. I was expecting kind of like an action packed episode. I wasn't right. expecting this emotionally impactful episode. So I don't know what were your thoughts. I thought the same thing. I when they said I knew someone was going to die, but I didn't know it was going to be a beautiful romance. Right, exactly. So and that's just kind of the way that they have kind of thrown us for a loop here but like I said, it's just it's it's been a wonderful show and they've done it's just another thing that they've done very very well in in this 
stand-up television show. Uh, yeah. All right. Is there anything else we need to discuss, or are we ready to go on to our awards? I think we're ready for awards. All right. Here on the Main Attraction Podcast, we have three weekly awards we do when we are covering a season of a television show. Up first, we have the Tyrion Lannister, the MVP for the week. I, I think I know what we're both going to do on this, but I'll still ask you I, who's your MVP. I'm pretty sure we got to go Coes to Bill and Frank to Nick Offerman and Barry yeah. Bartlett. And look, it's very much deserved. It's not like one yeah. over overshadowed the other because they're playing such they're playing such different characters, uh, mm-hmm. and it's just they do just such an incredible job look these are two guys who are known for and look there are some funny moments in their in their yeah. relationship but they're known more the Arby's for, com- conversation <laughs> that was a good one uh but they're known more for their comedy work than right. they are oh, yeah. for their dramatic work and and look nick offerman did a dramatic thing with devs i don't know if you ever saw that on hulu uh yeah. no, i didn't but i yeah i know it that was a dramatic role for him, but uh, most likes it most of the time. He's known. I mean, he's known for being Ron Swanson for crying. Out loud. Yeah, right, so, right. Uh, but you know, just the two of them being the comedic actors that they are to be able to pull off this drama shows that yeah. they are a very they're very well rounded. Even though they don't get the opportunity Absolutely. to show it off. So uh, the Agatha all come the Agatha all along the best scene of the week. What'd you go with? I got to go with their last day together. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, you could just put like their entire life together. I mean, honestly, right, on right. this, but I think that honestly is the the part where they, I mean, they just they just keep hitting it one home run after the other when they when they're showing this relationship as it has developed over the course of the twenty years, and but I think that is just kind of like the kicker was there at the end. So uh, next is the if you come at the king, you best not miss the best line of the week. What'd you go with? Well, there were several in this episode. Yeah, I there could have been one a about, few. Uh, I was never afraid, but I also want to mention pay attention. Paying attention to things is how we show love. Yeah, that was a good one. I didn't, I, I didn't have that one down, but I could have. Uh, the one I had was when Ellie was reading the letter from Bill to Frank, uh, from Bill to Joel. Uh, he says uh, there was one uh, when he's talking about he, how he hated people before all this thing, all this right. stuff happened. He says there was one per- person we're saving. And I did, and that's like I said, that's that yeah. continual reminder to, to Joel that he's got a. There's going to be a person that he's that he has to be willing to live for, a person that he has to be willing to save. Like I said, Bill thought it was going to be Tess, but it ends up it's going to end up being Ellie for him, and he has to come to that realization that all the effort that he put forth towards saving Tess, he now has to put forth towards saving Ellie. So, well, let me mention one more. And it okay, was go very ahead. funny. Where, where Frank was like, and let me guess, you thought the government were all Nazis. <laughs> they are. And Bill Nazis. goes, the government is all Nazis. <laughs> yeah, now, <laughs> now, but they weren't then. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I thought about writing that one down as well. I'd also put down the uh, line where we first meet uh, Bill, the not today <laughs> world order jackass. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one, so. All right. Uh, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, we have a five-tier rating system. At the top of our list is a Game of Thrones. Just with Game of Thrones is a is a lost beneath lost right in the middle of the road for us is friends beneath friends is a full house at the bottom of the barrel is a baywatch we have both been at game of thrones are you sticking there or are you going anywhere else oh, man. absolutely stick with game of thrones and i feel bad for the rest of these episodes these last two yeah have been some of the best stuff we've watched yeah it's look this has been look january is typically not known for its great television and movies mm-hmm. but this has been a great start for the for the year yeah. 2023 with this with this particular television show I'm, I'm right there with you i'm sticking it's it's been a game of thrones since day one for me i'm, I'm keeping it there uh look i think they'll I, I think the rest of the episodes we're going to get as we get deeper and deeper in this. I think we're going to start to see more and more of the of Joel's you know survival stuff coming out. Uh, but like I said, I'll just be interested to see how that plays out. So, all right, before we sign off uh, for this episode, we do want to give our listeners some recommendations, some things that we have watched and would like to pass on to them. So, what do you have for us this week? Uh, I'm going to give out two, and one involves Murray Bartlett. Welcome to Chippendales okay. on Hulu. It's about the beginning of the Chippendales dancing franchise, right. and Murray Bartlett is a big part. Kamel Nanjani. It is a wild story. Do not read anything about it and just watch it. It is has a lot of humor. It has a lot of drama. It has a lot of craziness. Okay. Uh, and it has a lot of male butts. I just want to hear about that. Uh, it's Chippendales, but it's an enjoyable series on Hulu. I, I would recommend it. The other one, I, I watched the movie You People, starring Jonah Hill, 
Eddie okay. Murphy and Julia Louise Dreyfus, and it is very funny. Where what is uh, it? A streaming or it's on, it? ne- it's, uh, it's on Netflix. Oh, okay. It's a movie. It's a comedy movie. Uh, Jonah Hill marries uh, Eddie Murphy's daughter. Oh, okay, that sounds interesting. And, uh, <laughs> hilarity ensues. Yeah, that, that sounds like it would be a, incredibly funny. So I'll about to check that one out. So uh, I've got two as well this week. Uh, up first is the television show on Hulu. They dropped every episode at once. It's called Extraordinary. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, I thought it, we might want to cover this at some point. Yeah, it's basically about a uh, it's about a world. It's about the world. It's it's about a different version of our world in which. Every person on the planet gets a superpower on their 18th birthday or shortly thereafter their 18th birthday, except for this one 25-year-old woman who doesn't have a power and basically how she kind of gets along in the world and what her life is like. Uh, it's it's really quite funny. I've enjoyed it. I haven't finished it yet, but I've enjoyed what I've watched thus far. Uh, it, does, it is very British. Uh, it's because it takes place in Britain. And it, it, like I said, it, it's funny. It's uh, thought-provoking at times. Uh, it's just a really, really good show. Uh, like I said, I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know if it's going to be... Uh, the if it's going to quite be as good at the end but it's been good this far so uh one i'm actually recommending we will eventually talk about this at some point because you were not a fan of it and that is the movie tar uh yeah. i loved it i saw it when it came out on peacock uh this this past weekend as i was recovering as i'm continuing to recover uh i watched it and look i i loved it uh i i, I think there's a reason for it and we, we originally want to talk about this because we had, do have very different opinions on on this yeah. film so yeah uh we're, we're going to try to find a time to work into working it into uh the rotation of the show but uh like i said it, it's if you you've heard two different opinions well, i would say go watch it and come up with one for your own uh look kate blanchett is amazing i think you would even agree with that oh yeah absolutely yeah but uh it's like i said she's just absolutely fantastic in it uh we'll talk about it at some point so uh one other thing i do want to recommend uh i came in re- i recommended kind of hesitantly last week uh that 90s show I've given a much better recommendation this week. Uh, we are going to talk about it. I think next week is when we're going to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, next week, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you watched it yet? No, I have not. I it's have it's not a good, started. quick, easy watch. I, I think the last yeah. seven episodes are much better than the first three, and I'll talk about that why, about why when we get into it next week. But it's a, I really enjoyed it after those first three episodes. The first three episodes I liked, but I really enjoyed it a lot more after those first three episodes. So, all right. Uh, I guess oh, one other thing before we go, uh, I do want to remind you guys we are going to be discussing the first four episodes of Poker Face in our midweek. Uh, we'll probably be recording that probably tomorrow night. I think I'll be able to, uh, to muster up enough energy to to record about that tomorrow night, uh, and we'll get that out to you. So if you haven't seen the first four episodes of Poker Face on Peacock, go do so. Uh, it's a great show. Fun show. Yeah, yeah it's, fun it's show. absolutely a wonderful show. So, Anything else you want to add before we sign off? Appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I would echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.